In the city of Rator, preparations for the attack upon Atea, White Queen of Tor, are being completed by the huge yellow-skinned Shan, Uka, and Darno. The Frenchman overhears Tamur and Poltar, two Ratorian chiefs, conspiring to advise Atea of the Ratorian plans. In leaving his hiding place, Darno is trapped by the conspirators. In the palace of Tor, word is brought to Atea of a planned revolt among the slaves of the jewel pits. With Wong Tai, the renegade Chinese, and Mungo, her chief of warriors, Atea hastens to the pits to investigate the rumor and to question Kai Luk, the Ratorian slave reported to be the instigator of the conspiracy. When he denies all knowledge of the plot, Atea, in a furious rage, orders him whipped until he confesses. Oh! Oh! oh. Enough, Mungo! Well, Ratori, you have tasted the lash. Speak now, or by Pantu, the guard will tear the flesh from your bones. I... No, nothing. Fool, you shall speak or die. Mungo, continue with the whip. Wait. Atea, why do you not ask me about the revolt? Ah, Tarzan of the apes. Then there is a conspiracy. Speak. What do you know of it? First order, Kai Luke released. He's not at the bottom of it. You know, then, who is? I'll answer that when Kai Luke's been released. You defy me? By the gods of Tor, I... Very well. Mungo. Release Rator. So, Tarzan, he is free. Speak now. Who is he who dares lift his voice against me? Point him out. Your lot will be the easier. I'm not worried about my lot. But what do you intend doing with Janet and O'Rourke and Kailuk here? I have given the orders concerning them. So I understand. O'Rourke and Kailuk, with others who wear the golden collar, go to the lions. And Jeanette to the winner of my fight with Mungo. Is that right? How do you know that? It's enough that I know. Am I right? Well, and if you are? Then you'll have to change your plans as far as O'Rourke and Kailuk are concerned. If you expect me to tell you what I know about this revolt. You, you dare dispute the word of Atea, Queen of Tor, by Pantu, Tarzan of the Apes, I shall... Your threats don't interest me, Atea. However, I'll bargain with you. Immunity and freedom for O'Rourke and Kailuk, for the name of the man who's at the bottom of the revolt among your slaves. And, Janet Burton, you are satisfied, O mighty king of the apes, to see her become the mate of Mungo. If he can beat me in our fight, yes. <laughs> this time, my Tarzan, you are too sure of yourself, too confident. Mungo will kill you and win the woman. Terence O'Rourke and that Ratorian dog, Kailuk, We'll go into the lion arena. Suit yourself, Atea. Come on, Orok. Kailuk, back to the pit. Wait! I have not finished with you, Tarzan of the Apes. Point out to me the one responsible for this revolt. Do Orok and Kailuk go free? No. Then find him yourself if you can. Mungo, guards, to the public whipping post with them. Notify the populace, the court, my chiefs and nobles. At one hour past midday, Tarzan... Every man, woman, and child in Tor will see the flesh stripped from your bones with the whips. Meanwhile, in the little anteroom in the Shan's palace in Rator, where Darno has overheard the plot to deliver the Ratorian war plans to Atea, the Frenchman is trapped as he tries to leave his hiding place by Temur and Poltar, the two Ratorian conspirators. Ah, uh, the white stranger who counsels our Shan to make war upon the Torians. The casement, Poltar. Close the shutters. And the what, Paul Darno? Do I owe the pleasure of this unexpected visit? To curiosity, mon ami. In passing that window, I heard voices speaking in English. So and... you entered through the casement, perhaps, to listen? How long have you been in this chamber? Uh, long enough, Monsieur Timur, to learn that you and your colleague here are traitors to your son. You are frank, Paul Dano. You realize that you're in a dangerous position? And do you realize, my friend, that I have only to call, and those chiefs out there on the landing, those men loyal to their shan, will come to my aid? It would be unwise for you to raise your voice, stranger. Ah, puis I am a prisoner, then? Let us say, a guest. I have ordered the guard to remain before the corridor door and permit no one to enter during your uh, visit. And how long do you think to hold me before Uka and the shan become curious at my absence. Your disappearance will be explained satisfactorily. Come into the next room. 
Close the door, Poltar. My private chamber, Paul Dano, in which you see there are no windows. You will be safe here, if not comfortable. Too much talk, Taimur. What shall we do with him? For the time being, he will remain here. I shall go presently and report to the Shan the disappearance of the white stranger. And how, mon ami, will you explain that? You will see. Polta. Tear the shirt from his back. Gonna the best if you think I shall stand idly by <coughs> and permit you. Use your strength, Polta. <laughs> These white men are pygmies. <coughs> Be quiet, stranger. <coughs> no, no. Here, Tim, with the shirt. What now? In the cabinet there, you will find cords with which to bind his hands and feet. Get them. And as soon as we leave him alone, he will cry out. It were better to put him out of the way at once. Here are the cords. With a gag between his teeth, he will not cry out. Bind his wrists while I look to his feet. A waste of time, this. Throw him to the lion, say I. <laughs> that is an idea. So, that will do for the present. Now, cloth for the gag. That tunic on the couch. Help! 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 Fire, Otto, that cry will bring the guard. Post the cloth between his teeth. Bind it behind his head. Leave the guards to me if they come. Your knife now, Polta. Cut his arm enough to bring a flow of blood. Why not cut his throat and be done with it? Do as I say. A cut high on the arm. I want his shirt stained with blood. It must be well colored to serve my purpose. There. It is done. And our plans, what of them? They must be changed. I will ride with you to Tor. Ah, Wagambo. Silent Temur to speak before this stranger. <laughs> He shall make no use of what he hears or has heard. Here, the shirt. It is well stained. So then, we ride together at once. First, I must get the consent of the Shan to lead the scout patrol. That will put us far in advance of our warriors. Then we will have nothing to fear. Meantime, go. Await me in the elephant paddocks. Arok, I shall be there. <laughs> and now, Paul Darno. I go to explain your disappearance to the Shan and Council. Your blood-stained clothing will bear witness to the truth of the story I shall tell. <laughs> In the city of Tor, the glaring noonday sun breaks down upon a vast yellow-skinned throng packed solidly about an open space in the center of the great square before the palace. Under a canopy of skins shading a raised platform that juts out from the wide palace staircase sits Atea, surrounded by the nobles and women of her court. On either side of her stand Wong Tai and Jeanette Burton. Extending across the square between the platform and the crowd is a long line of elephants mounted by the palace guard. In the middle of the line, Mungo himself sits proudly astride the neck of the huge, restless Black Maluk. Presently, a low murmur goes up from the throng. The crowd parts at the far end of the square opposite the royal platform, and Tarzan, O'Rourke, and Kailuk, surrounded by their guards, walk through the lane thus formed to the open space in its center. Like waves crashing on a nearby shore, the crowd murmur lifts to a deep crescendo as the three slaves are led to the tall stakes driven firmly into the ground. On the platform, Atea turns to Wong Tai. Wong Tai, the honor of once more questioning Tarzan of the Apes and those other two shall be yours. This one is highly honored, Majesty, by your confidence. If one gives up the name of the leader of the revolt, none shall be whipped. If none speak, all shall be lashed until they are... I comprehend, heaven-born. Your instructions shall be followed to the letter. An inscrutable expression in his black eyes... Wong Tai quickly descends from the platform. He makes his way between the line of elephants and walks to the center of the cleared space. Every eye in that vast concourse is on him as he halts before the three slaves. The great honor of questioning you and your companion, Tarzan, has fallen to me. I assure you the duty is not of my own choosing. So ye say, ye black-hearted fiend. But ye'll hear nothing from the lips of Terence or Ark. 
Get on with your rat killing. Perhaps, Kyluk? I have nothing to say. Uh, and you, Tarzan? Do O'Rourke and Kyluk go free? I have no authority to free them, my friend. Atea refuses to concede. In that case, I have nothing to say. What is there to prevent me from telling Atea that you have admitted being at the bottom of the conspiracy yourself? Nothing. Nothing. Excepting the fact that you have reasons for not speaking. Or you would have told her the truth yourself. I know that you are the ringleader. I haven't said so. Then you will not save yourself and your companions from cruel torture by admitting what I know to be the truth? There is nothing more to be said, Wong. Let's get on with it. As you wish. The Chinese nods gravely to the guards and steps back. Quickly, the three men are bound to the stake by their wrists. Look over there, O'Rourke. That big, restless elephant with Mungo on his back. I'm not interested in elephants now, my lad. I'm wondering how long I can hold out against them whips. It's Black Maluk, our wild friend of the paddocks. The one that carried Darno and Uka to safety. Watch. Antor! Antor! At Tarzan's call, the huge brute stops its nervous weaving. His immense ears stand out like great black wings. He lifts his trunk high, trumpets loudly. Suddenly, he lunges forward toward the ape man. Mungo, trying to stop him, digs deep with his goad. With an angry squeal, Black Maluk's long, sinuous trunk slips back to wrap itself about Mungo's leg. The yellow giant is jerked from his place astride the huge neck. With a mighty swing, the jungle titan crashes him to the hard ground. The contagion of Black Maluk's rage is transmitted to the other elephants. Right and left, into the throng, they toss their riders and follow in the wake of their huge leader. The close-packed crowd, milling and struggling desperately against itself to escape, roars in a pandemonium of fear. Crashing their way through the panic-stricken mob, the angrily trumpeting elephants with the mountainous black maluk in the lead charge straight toward the ape-man. 